uh, coming up in the next half hour. It is Earth Report. That's after a look at the international weather. You never know, there might even be snow in your weather, in your area. The eruption which created New Zealand's Lake Taupo was the most violent natural event of the last 5,000 years. The country is a geological pressure valve where planet Earth lets off steam. It's a spectacular landscape of geysers, bubbling mud pools and the world's biggest hot springs. The result of all this geological mayhem is a pristine, beautiful country that defines the national character. To the average New Zealander, climate change must seem a remote concern. But now, some of their political leaders are urging them to become carbon neutral and reduce their net greenhouse gas emissions to zero. What inspired me to go out and challenge New Zealanders to help us become a carbon neutral nation and to be truly sustainable was that if the world doesn't tackle this problem to future generations. The government's targets include energy. 90% must come from renewable sources by 2025. Our power consumption is going up each year. We need to look at more ways of generating power. Transport. Emissions to be cut 50% by 2040. They need cleaner cars, even electric cars. New Zealand is the fifth worst for greenhouse gas emissions per capita. And we can't blame that purely on our sheep and cows. Curbing farmyard emissions by 2013 has already led farmers to protest outside Parliament against the so-called fart tax. something, aren't we? Aye? Across the road from Parliament, the backbencher is a pub where they serve fish and chips and a drink to politicians, journalists and political cartoonists. Thanks to New Zealand's complicated electoral system, Helen Clark's Labour Party governed in a loose coalition which included the Green Party. Politicians don't agree about much, but when it comes to the environment, even Helen Clark's opposition agree. They just don't think she's delivered. While the talk has been great, the walk simply hasn't been there. A little bit less rhetoric and a lot more action is what New Zealanders need to see if we're going to live up to that clean green mantra. To see what carbon neutral means, you can start in the heart of New Zealand's wine country, where a local company achieved a world first. Croke Mill was, in actual fact, the, the first company in the world to, to actually have a product uh, certified um, as being carbon zero. And why did we do it? Well, there were no simple answer. We did it for a range of reasons. Uh, we were very environmentally conscious anyway. We still are. It's the most significant environmental impact man is having on this planet. Um, and we, fo we focused on that and we put the project in place. Step one was measuring. They measured their emissions and then cut back or reduced where they could. We used to fly helicopters over this vineyard for frost protection. It's extremely high in carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, this cuts it by probably about 90%. Step two was mitigating. Making their wine bottles lighter meant they needed less energy to make glass and less fuel for transport. Instead of air conditioning, this wine cellar is insulated. To keep it cool, computerised fans suck in cold air at night. But the vineyard could not eliminate trucks or shipping from the process. But they also have offsets, i.e. they do plant trees to balance off uh, the carbon that they are actually producing. So step three meant offsetting. In other words, planting trees or bushes because they can absorb carbon released into the atmosphere. Grove Mills believed their carbon-neutral status was a positive selling point and circulated a film to news agencies everywhere. But they were ahead of their time. We were very pleased with the, uh, <laughs> with the, with the work we'd done, but uh, 
the world didn't seem to be at the time. What happened? There was a degree of resounding silence. Deafening um, silence? Deafening, deafening silence. silence. It wasn't long before the world began to take climate change seriously. Climate change became mainstream and people bought into it, governments bought into it. Yeah, the Stern Report and um, Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth, they, they were the two big ones. And, and we'd sent out video to uh, news agencies all around the world and I think that they had filed it in the bin and then about two months later I think they were rummaging in the bin looking for somebody who had some footage and they found us. Unless they recycled, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Now the rest of New Zealand is trying to catch up with Grove Mill. Jeanette Fitzsimons is co-leader of the world's oldest Green Party. Her house shows she does not just talk the talk, she walks the walk. It is built from a local timber that needs no treatment. Power comes from solar panels when it's sunny and a micro-hydro when it rains. As a co-leader of the New Zealand Green Party, Fitzsimons has been successful arguing for greater use of renewable energy sources. New Zealand has a lot of natural advantages. Our electricity system is nearly 70% renewable now, mainly from hydro but with some geothermal and increasingly a little bit of wind. One of New Zealand's goals is to increase supplies of renewable energy. Here, nature has given New Zealand a head start. Tapping into underground volcanic heat, geothermal power plants can generate almost limitless clean power. Rivers, rapids and waterfalls are also an abundant source of hydroelectricity. New Zealand could increase the supply of renewable energy up from 70%. Um, a government goal to raise that to 90% renewable by 2025 that's something I do really praise the government for. It's an achievable goal. Some think wind farms could make up the shortfall, but they face opposition. Just ahead of us and to our right is the Tiapiti wind farm. The state-owned energy company Meridian has erected 55 wind turbines here at Tiapiti. I couldn't believe that they would want to desecrate our, our landscape. Not something you would desecrate lightly. From base to blade tip, the wind turbines are 106 metres high. As the wind farms have grown, the size of the wind turbines have increased quite remarkably. And, um, and the numbers of them, you know, they're just, it becomes an industrial site. There are 194 wind turbines in this area, and 97 more are planned. They seem like the perfect solution to everyone, except those who live near them. It's not just the look of it um, that we object to. We have a real noise problem. We have what's called a low-frequency vibration that comes through our house. The low-frequency noise, it, it comes up and it almost hits the house and it operates sort of like a tuning fork. So our whole house vibrates and actually it's very similar to someone standing next to you with a boom box. It's a bass beat that comes through and you can't get away from it. It comes up your spines, it wakes you up, it, you can't get good sleep. Jenny Jorgensen is campaigning to stop wind turbines being built less than two kilometres from people's homes. She also questions the efficiency of wind power. Well, the problem with wind is this. It's not going. Why not? It's not going because it's too windy. The componentry cannot survive in the really windy conditions. The gearboxes fail. The turbine blades, one of them we know has developed a hairline fracture. And if the wind is not blowing hard enough, then it's not enough to generate power. A, a large number of turbines are not working. And look at this one here. It's broken. Despite these objections, New Zealand is committed to wind power. But renewable energy is the low-hanging fruit. New Zealand faces far bigger challenges. Find out more in part two of this special edition of Earth Report. In Wellington, New Zealand's capital city, former Prime Minister Helen Clark thinks the government itself should go green. 
we have to show that we can lead by example as a government. We've set the objective of our public service becoming carbon neutral and we have a group of six lead departments that we want to be there over the next four years. All the energy produced by state-owned Meridian Energy comes from renewable sources. Even its headquarters are carbon neutral. This is Meridian Energy. It's New Zealand's first purpose-built green building on the Wellington's waterfront. Meridian's headquarters are already influencing the housing industry. My focus is around housing, and what this building does to me is it shows the industry, particularly the construction industry, what can be done. All the external facades, uh, the wooden louvers, uh, move with the sun and track the sun. So it keeps the, uh, the glare from the exterior and keeps the temperature inside. So we're already seeing that in housing, so we're actually seeing now um, shutter systems that, that work in that area. When the ambient temperature drops within the building, the building thinks, opens the window and lets the hot air in. 